Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. We are so happy to have you join us during this first full week of 2014. How many of your resolutions have you broken? How many do you set? I think there's more to life than resolutions. Oh, wow. I think that it <laughs> should so you broke the just second. be... January 2nd. So like me, you're wise enough not to even bother setting any of them and you just want to maintain an even keel throughout the new year. There we go. That, that yeah. sounds very good. That'd be a good show topic. Are, is your resolution still going on? You can email us. What's the Faith and Friends email? Jayback uh, at WTLW.com. That will work. That'll okay. get it to and us. Let us know if you're, you're still going on. And don't forget, if you have food for us to try, then it goes to A. Lynch at WTLW.com. Yes. If you can email food to me, that would be amazing. <laughs> With these new 3D printers, it's just running around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so did you do anything special for, for New Year's Eve? It was a family day. We were, we were all together and just Leah, me, and the kids. So we had a good time. That's good. Yeah. Good, I just slept. <laughs> Happy New Year, <laughs> <to> Jennifer. <laughs> it's kind of become my tradition. <laughs> you know, I guess that's a that sign that I'm an old lady. I don't know. I'm not answering that <laughs> one. <laughs> I think we should talk about what's coming up next. I think that's good. Coming up on today's show, we'll spend a little time with Point of Grace. Zach Bowers recently had a chance to talk with the award winning singing group. And you'll meet this year's John Reed Leadership Award recipient. It's always a good day when we are able to highlight an area individual using their skills to impact others for Christ. No question about that. I'll also take some time to talk with Jennifer, who recently returned from a trip out west to visit her grandfather. His final stage of life, we're thinking today about the importance of family, no matter where they live or who they are. God put you in a family for a reason. But first, today's verse of the day takes us to Matthew 25, verses 37 through 40. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did you see a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. When you do for the least of these, you also do for me. Oftentimes, doing for others involves impacting the next generation. Youth need role models. They need people to look up to during their incredible, informative years of life. A 2011 Barnett study surveyed teens ages 13 to 17 nationwide, asking them to say who they admired the most. The top answer, 37% cited a family member. Wow. Who came in right behind family? The second highest role model in the Barnett Group study was a sports coach. Not only did these teens cite a coach as a role model, they also cited this person as someone to look up to and possibly even follow in his or her footsteps. That takes us to our annual John Reed Leadership Award. Now, earlier this month, we presented our fourth annual John Reed Leadership Award. Actually, we did it late in December. We went to an area football coach that exemplifies the seven characteristics of the late John Reed, the longtime Coldwater football coach, and the presenter, former Michigan State standout Chris Norman, a linebacker that could have gone on to the NFL, but instead had a higher calling to enter ministry. Now, he'll be the speaker of the District 8 Fellowship of Christian Athletes banquet coming up this spring, and he learned a lot from one particular coach at Michigan State, his defensive back coach, Harlan Barnett. He allowed me to see uh, faith in coaching, faith in football, and how the two can really combine and come together. Um, he was very good at what he did. He was a very good coach, but at the same time, he was very intense. At the same time, he demanded excellence. At the same time, uh, he wanted his players to perform, and they did. Um, this year's John Reed Leadership Award winner is going to go to Matt Dudek uh, from Kitten High School. I've heard so many things about you. Um, I can personally say how much a coach really has an impact on the life of a young person. So me personally, I want to thank you for the sacrifices that you made for your students and the sacrifices that you made for your players because I know they all will be thankful for that in the future. Um, blessings to you and I hope that you continue to keep up the good work. Great stuff there. Some video from the Kenton Fellowship of Christian Athletes as we welcome in Matt Dudak. Here's the John Reed Leadership Award plaque. Congratulations on that. We, I told you about it before playoff game. I was doing the preview story at Kenton, mm -hmm. and, and you said, wow, I didn't even know I was nominated. Just what does it mean to win this award, Matt? Well, it's, it's, it's very humbling. Um, I, like I said, I didn't even know I was nominated. And when you came up and talked to me about it, I was like, shocked. I mean, I, 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 you, you were there. I didn't have the words to say. I, I, I didn't know I was nominated, and you know, it's, it's very humbling. It's not something I do on my own. It's a group effort on everyone that helps me, my family's part. And you know, it, it, it just means a lot that 
we're being recognized for the various things that we're doing in Kenton. Let's talk about your faith journey. You grew up in the church. I visited uh, the church you grew up in. How important was that? And just kind of take us through. Uh, growing up in church was very important to me. Um, my parents took me every week, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every, <laughs> every Sunday night. That's right, yeah. Was a, uh, was a, was a, was a church service. And so it was, it was very important to my uh, family's life, very important to my life, and it became ingrained into what, uh, what, what, where I am now in my faith and how I want to be a father and how I want to be the role model for students to hmm. look up to. You're very involved with Fellowship Christian Athletes. Uh, every Friday morning at 7 a.m., I know you guys are getting together. It's a great mm -hmm. meeting there. Why do you do it? Well, I do it because we didn't have an FCA when I was in high school. Huh. Um, when I got in college, I got involved with the FCA at, at Hillsdale and the Athletes in Action at Hillsdale, mm -hmm. and it was something that I wanted to bring to Kenton, and by the time I got back, they already had one. And so uh, Bryce Little was actually the one who started it up, and then when I started teaching, he said, you know, you're a teacher you're in the school. It'd be good if a teacher in the school with, who has um, contact with the students would uh, be able to run it. And so he gave me the reins, and I, I've taken it from there, and we've had various people come in and help me out. Mm -hmm. And it's grown from a group that was 6 to 10, and now we have about 50 to 60 every week. Awesome. Do you have a favorite memory from FCA, from coaching, something that sticks out uh, at this moment as you're getting recognized for the John Reed Leadership Award? Well, for FCA, it's just the amount that the group has grown. Um, we do d different things for charities, such as we do a cans for pancakes where we have kids bring in canned goods and pass out uh, those to a, a local place, like a food pantry such as Neighborhood Opportunity Center awesome. or Helping Hands. We have the Glove and Hat Tree. Um, just watching the kids kind of come together and as a place to kind of worship together uh, has just been awesome. As far as coaching memory, the ride we've been on the past few years with the, with the, with the success we've had in the football field has, has been fun. A, a little disappointing, but it's been a lot of fun getting to where we're at and uh, just connecting with the kids in that way. Yeah, state final game a couple years ago, state semifinals this year. His head coach that was his head coach when he played, Mike Mock, and who he now coaches for, reflects on how Matt mirrors the life of Coach John Reed. I think the first thing you see right away is the love for the Lord, you know, a, a founding belief that, you know, your salvation, your eternity is the most significant, most important thing in your life. And then being able to live your life to please somebody that uh, you know, has done an awful lot for you. I think that's the way John Reed lived his life. You know, he was a person that spent a lot of time with people, uh, whether he was associated with directly as a football team or in his program, but, you know, others that were involved in the sport of football and athletics in general. And, uh, you know, Matt Dudek's the same way. You know, he spends a lot of time with, with our kids, you know, uh, at school, before school, after school, and other activities. And he's just always there as a, a true mentor for young people. He exemplifies his relationship with Christ, uh, you know, inside and outside of school, in the classroom, uh, at church, in the community, on the football field. He's just one of those all-around great guys uh, that is the extension of the, the hands and feet of Jesus in the community. I remember when Matt Dudek was just a, a manager, a ball boy on our sidelines, came to all of our practices and grew up in our program, was around uh, all those guys when I was a younger coach just getting started and see him come into high school and have a great, tremendous career here as a, an athlete playing football and baseball for us. Um, you know, as a member of the 1998 uh, first undefeated WBL championship team we had, was a senior that year and did a great job. He actually grew up at the church I attend, attend and uh, he was actually one of the teens when I was a really young kid. And I got to see him throughout high school and how he lived his life, and it was a good experience. I remember going and watching him play football at Hillsdale and just the way he lived his life as a Christian. I attended his wedding, and I've just seen him become a great, mature Christian, and it's really he's a role model that I try and model myself after in my own Christian walk. Pretty special comments there. Colin Stoller tweeted me and said, Matt Barr was going to be the winner. You never know, 15 years from now. What's it mean to see a, a guy like Matt Barr grow up watching you and now have those words for you? Yeah, that means a lot. I mean, Matt is one of our FCA leaders, and he's just a great leader in the school. Um, if we could have 1,000 Matt Bars, the world would be a better place. It's just, it means a lot that you know, he looks up to me and that I've, I've made a positive impact in his life. One final word. Do you have anything to say to coaches out there? That, that, they're giving back to kids, maybe to encourage them. Football season's over. They're looking ahead to next year. Do you have a word for them? 
you know, just, just stick with it. Mm. Um, keep Jesus at the center of everything. I know I got an email this week to answer some questions about the John Reed Award, and yeah. that was the, that was my major thing was you know keep Jesus at the center mm -hmm. of everything. And I put in there, it may seem trivial, and it may seem that kind of redundant, but you know, if Jesus is at the center of everything, everything else will fall into place. Awesome. Matt Dudek, our fourth John Reed Leadership Award winner. Very deserving. Congratulations, Matt. Thanks for coming in. And we will have a new winner next year. So encouraging to see the Lord work through Coach Dudek. Well, stay tuned. We're going to shift our focus to role models to family in just a moment when Andy talks to Jennifer about her recent trip to California to visit her grandfather for the first time in nearly 20 years. But first, we're going to take you to the nice Swanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert. Now, maybe you were one of the nearly 1,200 who enjoyed the dynamic harmonies of the award-winning Christian singing group Point of Grace. Zach Bowers caught up with the musical trio who, after so many years, still love to use their talents of singing to praise God. Well, we are in Van Wert at the Nicewanger Performing Arts Center where Point of Grace is in town to bless us with some holiday music this season we are certainly excited for, in which we understand the Crestview High School Show Choir will be joining you for the second half. The Show Choir is going to be joining us night vision, and we had a sound check with them earlier, and they are just Wonderful. They're going to add so much to the second half of the show. Well, how exciting to get some of our local high schools involved in a great event here. And we have certainly been blessed by your music over Thank the you. years. Thanks. And how have you seen your music and your ministry grow throughout and over the years? Well, some of the exciting things that have happened kind of, we started about 20 years ago, and it's hard to believe that we're still together and singing. <laughs> but um, some of the things that we love is that we do a conference for teenage girls, and that has been kind of a wonderful outreach for us to, to do for teenage girls called Girls of Grace. And then um, one of the other exciting things is we've been able to do some things like the Grand Ole Opry, which has allowed us to do some things on country radio as well. But, um, you know, we're still heart in the thick of Christian music, but that's been an an opening that we didn't anticipate. Well, sure, and you mentioned it there briefly about your work, um, your ministry area, and some of the focuses you've had there, uh, Compassion International, I believe, yeah, Mercy yeah. Ministries. Mm -hmm. um, where is your, your ministry focus now? Is it still uh, with the heart of, of young women? You know, I think it's kind of twofold. Like Denise mentioned, definitely with Girls of Grace and the Heart of Young Women, and, and it's been amazing throughout the years to see the faithfulness of Nancy Alcorn and Mercy Ministries um, just blossom and grow. Um, you know, when we started, they have one girls' home, and now they've got probably uh, close to 10 mm -hmm. girls' homes, and that's been neat to see God's hand on that. Um, something that we're very passionate about, though, that we, you know, talk about every night that we can when we sing uh, is Compassion International mm -hmm. and just the good work that they're doing through child sponsorship and and poverty stricken countries all over the world. Um, it's so easy to get involved. Just go to their website, Compassion, um, and you can find all of the, the information there on, in, on how to sponsor a child. There's still so many children that need to be sponsored. And so we really feel like it's a calling of ours when we are given a stage and a platform in front of you know 1,200 people like that are gonna be here tonight in this concert in Van Wert to say, you know, we've seen the work that they're doing to help hungry children and children in need, and we want to get as many people involved as we can. And so we, we are privileged to, to use our platform for that. Wonderful, wonderful. And finally, um, talking about maybe what's in store now, what projects you're working on, or what we can expect in the future um, from Point of Grace. We just completed a project. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I did. You'd like to tell us about that? Lee? Well, my little project came in a baby package. Oh. I just, I had a little baby boy. Well, congratulations. So that kept us out of the studio for about a year and a half. Um, but, you know, we're actually beginning to talk about it's time to get back in the studio. It's time to get started on that that next record. So we'll, we're, we're definitely looking forward to doing that that and um, continuing to do what we do and that's just live on the road here and there do girls of grace and we we just like to show up when people invite us we like to show up and we just consider it a privilege and an honor to still do what we love doing well we thank you so much for talking with us here thank and for you. visiting van Wert. we're excited for the concert and hope that you will enjoy this is point of grace at the nice Wonger performing arts center Earlier in the show, we told you about a Barna Group study that revealed sports coaches as some of the top role models for today's youth. What came in higher than a coach? The number one role model for young adults aged 13 to 17, family members. Now, just a week ago, Jennifer took a trip out to Northern California to visit with her 91-year-old grandfather who is in his final stages of life. This was a trip you knew you had to take. You haven't seen him in a while. That's right. What was the motivation for it, first off? Well, I think it's so important for us to see our family members when they're alive, mm -hmm, right. as opposed to waiting to get that phone call and uh, you have to go out for a funeral. So it was really important to me that I took the time and 
spent time with him while he was still conscious and able to talk with me. And we had some great opportunities. He told me some incredible stories. Hmm. It's a lot of things that you learn about your family members, but you have to take time to be with them if you're going to actually learn those types of things. And I had a similar situation, an estranged grandfather. I hadn't seen him since my teenage years. And my dad got the call that grandpa's dying. He's in hospice. He lived down in Georgia. And so we all decided, my brother from San Antonio, Texas, and me from flying out of Dayton, and my dad out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we all flew down to Atlanta, Georgia, and, and we were going to see Grandpa, who had abandoned us time and time again. And we got to the hospice and knocked on the door, and he was, he was in that stage of life where he wasn't talking. You know, He was mm -hmm. down to his final days. He hadn't drank any water for three, four, five days, mm -hmm. and the hospice staff couldn't make him drink the water. And so there he was, just lying on a bed, uh, a skinny leg, you know, this big. Uh, a shell of who we had remembered good parts of his life and there were so many times that he had walked away but we wanted to see him alive still and, and that was a special moment when his eyes opened and he recognized we were there mm -hmm. you know the redemption the redemptive moment of family members that realize they're reaching the end and there's a lot of things maybe they did wrong but us by going to see them we give them a chance to do things right well i think it's possible for us to take situations that maybe harmed us early mm -hmm. on in life and allow those to shape our opinions of our family and mm -hmm. and kind of wait for for that person to take the first step forward to forgive or to say I'm sorry I mean or something like that but instead of that I think it's important for us to take the first step forward and say you know I'm going to love this family member regardless of what they've done who they've been all of those things and fortunately in my case I didn't have any negative situation with mm -hmm. my grandpa I just simply hadn't seen him yeah. it literally had been 20 years since wow. I saw him and not only was it 20 years with him but it had been 20 years with some of my cousins with an aunt mm -hmm. it would have been 12 years with an aunt and uncle so part of this trip was so important to reconnect with uh, family members who are going to be living for decades to come and rebuilding that relationship that I think God wants us to have you know, that's what I admire so much about our area is we have so many families that are all together mm -hmm. and they they know that I, you see t schools from the Midwest Athletic Conference. They grow up together. Cousins know cousins. Cousins are in, in different towns. They live all the way in Versailles to so <laughs> someone from Marion Local. You know, it's close by, and they've got that importance of family here. And I think that really does help grow families. Absolutely. And you know, if that is a situation that you're in and your family members are close by, there could be a very good chance that there are certain family members that you choose not to talk with, that you don't really want to visit with them at holidays. And I would just encourage you to not allow those thorns to stay in the middle of that relationship. And that instead you'd say, you know, what? I'm going to be bigger than this. I'm going to be larger than this situation that happened and, 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 and decide that you're going to be the one to rebuild that relationship and make sure that it is what God intended it because you know Andy God created families and I know they're created different ways there's adoption and there's step families and all these different right. things but yet God integrated them together mm -hmm. and we need to do our part to make sure that those families are united as Christians it's our biggest ministry they're the people mm -hmm. that are right next door to us whether it's our kids our grandkids or aunts uncles you know whoever they are that's who you're most connected to that's who knows you best and so it's a great chance to share the love of Jesus with them just what was the most special moment for you um, in California you know I walked into the nursing home where my grandpa is now living and mm -hmm. will probably live here for the rest of his life which could be to be honest with you it could be days it could be weeks maybe he'll have a month we don't know but mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's it's not going to be long and um, to see his eyes light up the minute I walked mm. in the room. You know, the last time he saw me, I think I looked a little different than I do now. I didn't have my kids. I didn't, wasn't married, none of those things. Mm. But I, so we spent the entire day uh, listening to stories mm. and I found out that my, my grandpa had been in radio and Nat King Cole was one of the uh, really? singers that came to, uh, came to the, the studio and he huh. started naming all of these bands that were there. And, wow. and then my, he was telling me all about his writing that he mm. did. And I, I was almost ashamed that I did not realize how much of my television ability may have come from him and mm. the writing ability. It's, there's generations being passed right. with that. Of course, they didn't have TV back then. <laughs> but, you know. but I think probably the thing that hit me the most was when we were getting ready to leave mm -hmm. and the look that he gave me mm -hmm. and the way he held onto my hand, I, I, I didn't think I was ever going to get out of there. Mm. Um, and to realize that even though I had spent 20 years being absent and I was not the best granddaughter, I didn't connect with him all the time when I probably should have done it, yet that didn't sever the love that he had for me. Mm. And that was, that was really special. That was you wonderful. know you'll see him again someday. That's right. He'll be up in heaven. That's right. And we look forward to those redemptive stories coming back together with family members that have passed on.
Mark has more. Our theme all day has been role models, and here at TV44, we want to be a role model in the community as well. We appreciate hearing from you, our viewers, and recently we received this note. Thank you for a breath of fresh, clean, godly programming. This is a rarity on TV today. Now, this viewer went on to talk about the programs that they appreciate, including John Hagee, Adrian Rogers, Beverly Exercise, Your Health with the Beckers. Another viewer recently wrote, we like the programming to listen to some of our favorite pastors. We also enjoy the sports programs and always like seeing our grandson when some of the running <laughs> events are featured. We certainly get the plenty of cross country and track and field, but we wanna pray for you before we go in this new year. So let's bow our heads and Father, we just thank you so much for our viewers. We thank you for the partnership we have with them here in ministering in West Ohio. And we just pray that this new year can be a new start in our lives as we point towards you to lead us. In Jesus name, amen. Before we go, let's take one more look at our passage for the day, Andy. Matthew 25, 37 through 40, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When do we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? When do we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them assuredly, I say to you and as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. What you did for the least of these, you also did for me. Boy, that's some heartfelt stuff. What are we doing for the least of these? What, are we, what do we need to do more of? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We want to remind you that you can enjoy every episode of Faith and Friends online. Visit WTLW.com, click on Faith and Friends. Also, don't forget a brand new show every Monday at 7 o'clock. Here are other times to catch our show. You can see it Tuesday at 9, Wednesday at 9 a.m., Saturday at 7.30 in the evening, and then again Sundays at 2 in the afternoon. All right. And coming up next week, Andy gets to eat again. He hasn't eaten in two weeks. What vegetables, right? <laughs> what are you gonna, cooking up over there, Jennifer? We're just going to keep it a surprise. All oh, I can dear. say it has something to do with being healthy in the new year. I've been drinking vitamin water. The lemon kind is good. <laughs> Tastes like it has sugar. Also, we will have part one in a really inspirational story. How about this? A local woman who survived cancer only to be faced with an even bigger challenge as a mother. You're going to want to check out that story. Mm -hmm. Certainly something to look forward to. If you have a good story ideas for us, shoot us an email at uh, jbeck at wtlw.com or a lynch at wtlw.com as well. How about M. Koontz at wtlw.com? <laughs> I'm just going to forward it on to the two of you. So. <laughs> and remember, food. We want food samples. Remember. He wants food samples. <laughs> I think she's the one that really wants the food samples over Vegetables here. Vegetables to make him eat. That's the as thing long as you don't set off the fire alarm in the kitchen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> A couple times. Well, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for being with us, and we pray that you have a wonderful week in Christ.